Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Who's going to be the first one to join me today? I think the past couple of weeks it's been Leela. Who is it going to be today? Who is it going to be the first one to join me? I'm trying to get it on my phone. I see a couple of people. Who are you? It is Bryson. And Kendall, hi, great ones. Hi, 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 Riley. Hi, Daisy. Well, you guys are right on here with me today. I need to get my comments on here. And this time I did it so that you don't hear me. I figured it out. I kept practicing and I figured it out. Okay, and now I hope it doesn't change when I click on this. And I guess every time I go live. All right, I see Leela is here, Anaya, my jazz that I miss. Hi, Darius. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think I told my great ones in class today. Did I tell you guys what kind of book I was going to read? I can't remember. But I put it on here. It's going to be some type of superhero book. So while we're waiting a couple of minutes for other people to go in or join in, Oh, you said stamina. Did I tell you guys that? Is that what I said? It is going to be about stamina. You're right. You remembered. Hi, Christian. Hi, Casey. My great ones are here. Like I said, I'm going to wait. Bailey. Oh, my gosh. Bailey, I remember you from, oh, my gosh. I have, don't know how long ago that is. Um, how old are you now? I had you when you were five and six in kindergarten. How old are you now? Adrian is here. So some of you guys are saying that I said, yes, I did say I was going to teach you or talk about stamina because we've been talking about that in class and some people are saying no. So I see the prediction of Wonder Woman. I guess you're using my pajamas as a clue because these are Wonder Woman pajamas. I wanted it to be a connection. Hayden and Parker, hi, thank you for joining me. Thank you. 17 and a senior in high school. Wow, that's awesome. You're going to have to tell me, Bailey, what college you're going to and all of those things. So I can say, well, I knew her when she was in kindergarten and now she's off to college, off to pursue her greatness. Thank you guys for joining me. I know I have new people, new people. Thank you so much for joining me. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, great one, to this wonderful Miss Yearby reading adventure. And I want you to feel free to go ahead and to comment and to send some love because I love all of the smiles and hearts. Hearts are my favorite. I don't have anything going on right now, but I usually have something. Oh, there's a heart right behind me. Those are my favorites. So if you send me those hearts, that'll make me really happy. And I see Coco and oh my gosh, from California. Palm trees are my favorite. Whenever I see a palm tree, I hug it because I love warm weather and we don't have palm trees here in Virginia. So thank you guys for joining me. I am going to go ahead and get started. Sam, I miss you. Great one from last year. I'm just going to pretend that I'm hugging you because I miss you. All right. Today, what we're going to talk about some of, the reading some of the reading strategies that you should always be using. Whenever you read, I want you to use the pictures. The illustrator spends so much time creating the pictures to tell the story, just like the author uses the words to tell the story. Another strategy that we're going to use, that good readers use to help them to understand what they're reading, is to make connections. Like a text-to-text -text connection would be, in one book, the book that I read with my students, I believe it was yesterday, was a book called Flossie and the Fox. And there was a fox in that book. And then some people said that was the same thing like in Little Red Riding Hood, they said there was a fox in that book. So that would be like a text to text connection. And it's just gonna help you to remember and understand what you're reading. Maybe you can make a connection to something that happens to you. If you're reading a book about a dog and then you have a dog, you can say, oh yeah, I can remember what my dog was running outside. So it's just going to help you to understand what you're reading. Something that is extremely important is to visualize. And when you visualize, you make pictures in your head. You use your five senses. Like if I said, oh, that smells really good. 
What's the first thing that comes to your head? I want you to type that to me. What was the first thing that came to your head if I said, that smells really good? Hi, Lila and Cliff. One of the things that comes to my head because I'm originally from Chicago is pizza. I love the smell of pizza. Or if I go, look at that, flying above. What did you visualize? What did you visualize flying above as I look up here? Did you look up too? I visualize a flock of geese flying over my head. Or you might say, oh, that doesn't smell good. What did you visualize? What picture did you put in your head? I don't like watermelon. So if someone had watermelon, I would say, that doesn't smell good to me. That's something else that's gonna help you to understand what is going on in the story. And lots of times you can visualize by pretending that you are the character and how you would feel if whatever circumstance, whatever event is happening to you, like it's happening to the character. So those are the things that we're gonna to do today. Use the pictures, make connections, and visualize. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Yes, I see some things on here that would not smell good. But I told, <laughs> I'll share a quick story and then I'm going to get started. Adults, if you guys are watching, I see that one of my, hi Nolan, hi great one, one of my students put some poop emojis on there. And I used to volunteer at the zoo a few years back and my ele elephants are my favorite animal. And I used to volunteer with the zookeeper who worked with the elephants and yes, I had to clean the elephant poop. Well, you know that the elephants at the Virginia Zoo have been shipped to Florida and the Virginia Zoo no longer has elephants and I no longer volunteer at the zoo. So I told all of my kids to show them a picture of some ele an elephant with some poop and they were all like, ew. And I said, yes, for you, that's a really stinky thing. But for me, because I would love to be able to have the opportunity to volunteer and work with elephants again, I said, if I went somewhere and I smelled it, I would be like, oh my gosh, there are elephants around. Okay, so I'm going to get to the story now. I am going to be reading. Oh, something else that we're going to do just a little bit of is predicting. When you think and make a good guess of what's going to happen next. If your prediction is right, you confirm it and you say yes. And if it's wrong, no big deal. You just change it. Okay, super dog. And I might have to turn off some of these lights because it's got a glare. There we go. Okay, that's better. Maybe I'll turn. Okay, I want you guys to be able to see the words. Superdog, the heart of a hero. Written by Carolyn Buner, illustrated by Mark Buner. And I don't know if she's on here. One of my great ones from this year purchased a book from me, Snowman at Halloween. And this is the same author and illustrator of that book. Look at Superdog. I can already make a text to self connection. I am reading a book just like Superdog is reading a book. See, what is this book about? Can you guys see it? It says Planet Protector. Oh, wait, look at the picture. Is he a Superdog already? Oh, he's not. I guess in this book we're going to find out. He's at the movie theater. Other superheroes or super dogs. In the mirror, making some muscles there. Sorry about looking at the picture. What's happening in this picture? Looks like all of the other characters are doing what? My light is not right today. I see the cat is laughing. I see the mouse is laughing. The dogs are laughing. And look at him. He's not laughing. I wonder why. Dexter was a little dog. His legs were little. His tail was little. His body was little. He looked like a plump sausage sitting on four little meatballs. Doesn't look like that to me. Being the size that he was, Dex was often overlooked. Often, where is he? 
overlooked. Oh, down there. The other dogs grew tired of waiting for Dex to catch up when they played chase. And after a while, they forgot to invite him at all. Oh my gosh, how would you feel? Visualize how you would feel if everyone is playing and then they stop inviting you. How would you feel? Tell me. No one really seemed to notice him, except when Clevis, the tomcat, well, that's the only cat that must be Clevis, demonstrated how he could stand right over Dex and not even ruffle his fur. Yep, that's Clevis. And basically, he's just saying, you're so little. Yes. Everything about Dex was little except for his dreams. He wanted to be a hero. He could just see it. Oh, he's visualizing. He is visualizing in his head. He's like, oh, if I were a superhero, he sees himself flying. The mighty Dex flew up into the dark and starry night. But wanting and being are two different things. Dex lived on dreams until one day, after crawling out from under Clevis yet again, he decided there had to be more to life than gazing at the underside of a cat. Gazing at the underside of a cat. Can you guys give me another word for gazing? Hmm. I wonder if looking would work. Let me see. He decided that there had to be more to life than looking at the underside of a cat. I think that works. There had to be more to him. If he could be a hero, he would. So Dex started training. He read every superhero comic book he could find. He watched every hero movie ever made. He went to the library. Oh wow, guys, he's getting better. He's practicing, he's learning. He wants to be ready. Great ones from this year. He is what? What's the word? Les Brown says it. Fiercely, he studied, knowing everything depended on him. He's dependent on himself. He's doing it by himself. He's self-reliant. Hi, Jalen. I connected from last year. Look at him. He looks so tired. He's even got sweat coming from his face. Dex figured that a hero must have strong muscles. He needed exercise and lots of it. He started trotting to the corner and back every morning. He hopped over every crack in the sidewalk. Hard work. Kind of reminds me of the little red hen who kept doing that hard work. That will be a text-to-text -text connection. He struggled to climb the garbage pile. Look at him, having such a hard time with those little legs and I see more sweat. Up and over and down, then up and over and down again. All day long he worked, day after day, even at bedtime, when he wanted to flop on the rug with his tongue hanging out. Dex forced himself to circle five extra times. There we go. Like Kendall said, there's that stamina. He wants to stop. He's so tight. He just wants to lay down. But he's like, oh, I gotta do this. Five more times. The mighty Dex pressed on through wind and rain and storm and fatigue. Fatigue. Adults, lots of times when children have a word that they're unfamiliar with on test, like fatigue, yeah, they will be asked to find another word to go there instead. So great ones, help me. Would we say happily, happiness, tiredness, or laziness? Let's see. The mighty decks pressed on through wind and rain and storm and happiness. Look at that picture. Would happiness work? Would that work? Through wind and rain and storm and tiredness. The tiredness work? Is he tired? Does that make sense? Or 
the mighty decks pressed on through wind and rain and storm and laziness. What's the answer, guys? Which one makes sense? Well, what we know about Dexter, he's practicing every day. He's running up and over. I see right here, he went up and over and down, then up and over and down again. And when he wanted to stop, he forced himself to do it five more times. It has to be tiredness. Oh, look at him here. Everyone is laughing at him yet again. This reminds me another text to text connection. I just finished reading the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Remember when the two lazy pigs were laughing at their brother and he was working hard? That's what I see here. Laughing, laughing, laughing. Look at that face. When it got easier to run the corner and back, Dex did it again and then again. Then he dragged a sock filled with sand as he ran. Then two socks. When Clevis was bored and stood in the middle of the sidewalk to block his way, Dex dropped to the ground and slid right under him. He was too busy to be bothered by Clevis. He's focused, not letting anything stop him. Dex was tired. He was sore. He was working so hard that he almost forgot what he was working for. But one night, as he dragged himself to bed after his last set of push-ups, he stopped in front of the mirror and flexed. He could feel them. He could see them. What? He's been working every day. Even when he's tired, he's just finished the push-ups. He's been running. What does he see? What does he see, you guys? Muscles. Do you see those muscles? He didn't look like that at the beginning. He's got all kinds of muscles. Muscles in his back, in his arms, in his chest. Muscles! Now, Dex didn't take the stairs. He skimmed them. He leaped over hydrants. He vaulted up curves. He could jump over the garbage mountain without touching the top. He could run like the wind. He felt as if his legs had springs. That's like what's in a pin, that when you push the top of the pin, it pops out. He felt like his legs were like that. Faster than a rolling ball, stronger than the toughest rawhide, able to leap tall fences in a single bound. I guess hard work pays off. I saw someone said that. He is strong. Muscles. Only one thing was missing. What's missing? What does he want to be? Let's go back and find that answer. Let's see, what does he want? Here he said, oh, he wanted to be a hero. I found that right here. What's missing? He's got his muscles. He's got stamina because he's been working. And even when he wanted to stop, he kept working. What's missing? What's missing? Some dogs can't have their muscles show. If you see a picture, Leela, if you see a picture of a dog called a pit bull, their muscles show. They won't stand up like that, but you can see their big muscles. And even my dog, when he was younger, he's a little old man now, his muscles used to show. Maybe I'll be able to show you a picture. I see a cat flying, superpowers, the suit. Lily, oh my gosh, Abby. His suit. This is a fiction book. Finally, a small brown package arrived. Dex ripped it open. Why did he rip it open, guys? What does that mean? He's really, really, he's excited. Have you guys ever been excited? Make a text to self-connection. Was there something that arrived at your house that you were so excited to open that you just ripped the papers off? His hero suit! If you said hero suit, you can confirm your prediction. It was red with a shiny green cape and it fit like a glove. Dex loved the way it felt. He loved the way it looked and he loved the feeling he had when he put it on. He was ready.
with the courage of a lion, the strength of a bear, and the heart of a hero. It's ready. What's he going to go do now? Give me some predictions. What's he going to do? I see this little dog. I need some predictions. What's happening here, guys? Save the world, be a hero, fly. Here's a dog, and if you look right here in the background, here's Dex coming very, very fast. When Dex went out in his suit for the very first time, he looked up the street and down. He noticed a young pup trying to cross the street. Dex sprang into action. May I help you? He asked. He guided the wide-eyed pup across the street. And look at this pup's eyes. They are very wide. I thought that was pretty funny. And grinned as the pup stared up at him with his mouth hanging open. <laughs> the pup whispered, Wow, it's Superdog. Superdog? Dex liked the sound of that. So where did Dex get the name Superdog from? Of course, when Clevis saw Dex, he had to comment, Hey Dex, where's the party? And when he saw him a few days later, Clevis called up, Look everybody, it must be Halloween. Anybody got a treat for Dex? So here they are, sitting around, doing nothing, drinking, not working, and here he is on a mission, out to help whoever needs help. Dex was so busy, did he let it bother him? Mm -mm. He's focused, not paying attention. There's plenty of people who don't like me, but there are 10 times more who love me, and I love myself. Sometimes it gets tough, it, it, it gets tough, but I can't give up, can't give up, just take a deep breath, close my eyes, Feel the love and give a smile. How many of my great ones sang it with me? This year, last year, year before that? Dex was so busy that he was able to ignore Clevis for the most part. The only time his face got red was when Clevis yelled, Where do you get the dress up? Dex had to wonder if Clevis saw anything but the suit. Didn't he understand that the suit was just a way to let people know he was there to help? Give me a word to describe Clevis. Clevis is what? There was a mouse he saved from a sewer. A purse snatcher he tackled. He fixed his neighbor's sprinkler. Although, I don't think he's actually fixing the sprinkler because he's biting it. He's putting holes in it. He found a lost kitten. Looks like it must be in the sewer. Pulled a rat away from a live wire. Tackled down a lost, no, tracked down a lost wallet. Put out a trash fire and organized a neighborhood cleanup day. It seemed that now, whenever anyone needed help, they turned to Dex, and Dex had never been happier. Wow, he found out what he was supposed to do. He's supposed to help others, and it made him so happy. What are you supposed to do? And when you do it, it makes you so happy. So what's happening here? Everyone's at a house, and it's dark. That's Dex's house. That's Dex's house. Why do you think they're all there? And the pictures are dark. Can you tell he's missing? Maybe not. No, he can't. He can't see. But why would they be there?
I did send it to you earlier today because you were telling me about someone who said something unkind to you. Late one evening, there was a banging at the door. When Dex answered, it seemed as if the whole neighborhood was yip, 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 and yell, yell, yelling in a panic. It's Clevis, they shouted. He's stuck in a tree. Hurry, Dex, hurry. Dex raised his eyebrow. It was not like Clevis to move enough to get into trouble. What is he saying about it? What is he saying about Clevis if he said it's not like him to move enough to get into trouble? In a flash, he was stressed and ready. I think he's calling him lazy. Just like the cat right here. I read this to you guys. He got on the bike. It was clearly a desperate situation. I don't think there are any people in this book. I think all these houses are owned by animals. You guys can't see it very well, but there's an animal in the window here and an animal in the window there. As he got closer, Dex could see Clevis. He had been chasing the squirrel to the top of the tree, but had slipped and was hanging by one claw from a slender branch. He was yowling for all he was worth. Ow! Ow! I'm slipping, Cleva screeched. Help me! Dexter looked desperately around for something to climb on. Do you see anything that he could climb on that would help him get up there? Because dogs can't climb trees. What would Dexter do? Predictions. Is there anything in the picture? There were no boxes or ladders, not even any trash cans. Then Dex looked at the crowd. And here's Dex right here if you haven't seen him. Quick, everybody! Dex shouted. Oh, I don't you see that yet. I've got an idea. Dex leaped onto the end of Teeter Totter facing the tree, pushing it to the ground. When I was growing up, we called this a seesaw. So he pushed it down to the ground. Everybody on the other end. One, two, three. They all jump on the other end. And what's gonna happen to Dexter? And they put all of their weight on that end. Great ones. I used a balance scale just the other day. What's gonna happen when all of them jump on that other end? All the animals jump together on the other end of the teeter-totter, catapulting Dex into the air. Catapulting. Hmm, I'm gonna need another word. Give me a word for catapulting. All of the animals jump together on the other side of the teeter-totter. You have a word? Launching Dex into the air. Shooting Dex into the air. He soared over the crowd, his ears and cape streaming out behind him. The mighty Dex flew into the dark and starry night. Look at everyone. I see Dex. Dex. I see the cat. I see the squirrel. And they all look scared. They all look terrified. Thumbs up. Is Dex going to be able to help? Thumbs down. Dex is in a tree. He doesn't know what to do with up there. Let's see. Thumbs up. Or thumbs down. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, he flung him into the air. I like that one. What's going to happen? Ready for some thumbs? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Dex scrambled onto the branch next to Clevis. Quickly, he pulled off his cape and tied its four corners onto the screeching cat. Jump! Dex shouted. Jump, Clevis! There you can see him taking it off. See, Cleavis is just hanging by that one claw. I see some thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. So here we go. Here's Dex. I'm sorry, here's Cleavis. 
coming down. With an ear-piercing shriek, Clevis let go. <laughs> the bellowing cape caught the air and parachuted the big cat to the ground. Dex backed up and slid to the ground amidst the cheers of the crowd. Did you say that he was going to be able to save him? He is a superhero. Dex was bruised and tired, but he forgot all his discomfort as Cleavis sheepishly lumbered over, still tangled in the green cape. Thanks, Dex. You are a hero. And it's after eight, so I'm going to quickly finish. Dex didn't think he could feel any better, but he did, just a little. The next day, when Cleavis sided up next to him and whispered, Say, Dex, could I be your partner? Dex, Dex looked the big tomcat up and down. It would take a lot of work to turn Cleavis into a hero. He could hardly wait. Sure, said Dex with a grin. Sure. With twice the brains and triple the brain, our heroes forge on, ever ready to lend a helping hand. So, we've been talking about theme. What would be the theme of this book? The theme is what the author wants you to fill in your heart and think in your mind so that you can remember it and do it in your life. What would be the theme of this book? What would be the theme? Ayalani. I believe that the theme is kind of the same as it was with the little red hen. Hard work and determination pays off. Also, I think don't let other people, because we're not worried about animals, don't let other people being mean to you bother you right here. Instead of him just going somewhere and saying, nobody likes me, he got better. Started reading. He started watching movies. He started exercising. He got better. And then once he started to get better and they bothered him, he ignored them. People are being mean to you. Ignore them. I've already sung my song. There's plenty of people who don't like me, but there's 10 times more who love me. And I love myself. Just remember that. All right, I have to do it. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, my students, I've been doing it for the past three years. Their morning work every day is to write one thing that they're happy about. So I want all of you who are watching me, adults and children, I want you to think of one thing that you are happy about so that if you are having a sad day, if someone has hurt your feelings or you're just not feeling good, you can think of that one thing and it will bring a smile to your face. Get that one thing in your head and lock it in. When my students have a hard time with the concept, and when they learn that concept, I'll walk over to them and say, lock it in, lock it in. I want you to also think of the thing that you did that you were proud of, not something that someone else did, something that you did. Like I could look at myself and I can say, Keisha, I am proud of you for making it to the front page of the newspaper, the largest newspaper in Virginia. I am definitely proud of that. I want you to think of something that you did that you were proud of. You can write it here, you can get it in your head. The journals that you see, it's backwards. The journals that you see in here, this one here, things that I've written that I am proud of and I'm happy about, that one up there, I have lots of journals and I tell my students about that. So get the thing that you are happy about, get it in your head and lock it in. Get the thing that you did, that you are proud of, lock it in your head. You Got it locked in, inhale, exhale, smile. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for experiencing this reading adventure with me. I want you to do something tomorrow. Do something the next day. Do something every day to make someone else smile. And I'll see you guys again here next week. Bye.